All right, welcome back. So we are moving to our JavaScript document object model. So it is called JavaScript DOM. All right. So inside our folder, I've created a new HTML file called DOM.html. So just create a new file here and name it DOM.html. Then uh, bring the HTML up. You see that you type all of this out. Right and uh, and uh, this is just a comment here. As you can see, the color is different from the color of the normal body of the HTML document. So this is so DOM. Now I'm just giving a description. DOM is document object group name. It's an application programming interface like an API that will help us to manipulate the HTML document. So in the, so that's just it. So and Doom works like a family tree. You know, it has a father, it has grandfather, it has children, it has siblings, etc. etc. So in this case now, this uh this this uh document, this doc is the root node, it's just like the great grandfather. Alright, then this HTML is a child node to document. Is a, is a direct shared node to document and is the only shared node to document as you can see it is html and it closes so this doc does not have any other siblings that's how to put it but inside the html node we have head you understand this head opening and head closing body opening body closing then inside even body we have script and script then inside body, let me just put up paragraph. We have paragraph. This is JavaScript node. You understand? Now, because this HTML opening and closing houses head and body, all of them here. So it means that this head, this head opens and closes here, body opens and closes here. Both of them, head and body, they are in the same level. The head and body, they are, so they are like the same children to HTML. All right? Then the so they are they can be compared as both siblings. All right? But head also had other elements in between, like title, like meta name, like this meta and this meta. So this title, meta, and meta, they are also siblings. Who are child node to add this uh, this paragraph this script is there are also siblings who are also child nodes to body but body and head are both child nodes to HTML why HTML is also a child node to document type so it's just like a family body head they are siblings and etc like that so that is a simple way to explain how node works uh, so how uh, what doom is all about and we can use most of this information to manipulate the content of what is written in the body from our javascript code so we can use it and that's where we are starting so the one of the most used uh, tag like uh, method i will call it method for selecting uh, elements in the doc is get element by id so so get get element by id when we started html and css i told you about uh, about attributes so the this paragraph can have an attribute and one of those popular attributes that you can see is an attribute called id from the word identity so you call you can put id you understand and the, the the this is an attribute of paragraph and the attribute must have a value all right so here would call would uh, so we're going to be saying uh, id let's say message this is just the message this is javascript direct node document object model all right so the the, the id the identity of this paragraph is 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 it's called message so that means we can have more than one paragraph 
and each of those paragraphs have their own different identity. And because of that, we can use the get element by ID to uh, to eventually uh, have access to what is inside the element. So I'm going to uh, create a variable. I'm going to call it const. Const. So you know, I told you about how to create variables in JavaScript. So you can use const, you can use var, you can use let. So constant means it cannot change. So I'm going to do const p equals to document document look at it now document. I'm referring to this particular document, this old document. So dot get element. See, it's giving me the options by ID. All right. So inside, I'm now going to specify the name of the ID I want to have access to. So the name, that's the name of the attribute that I want to have access to. All right. So then, so I will, I will just put it here. Get element by ID. Is 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 expecting a string. This is this is an. Sorry. Get element by ID. I don't know what's wrong with my. So get element by ID. So I'll put the name of this ID message inside. So we are now going deeper into programming in this sense. So constant p document dot get element by ID. So we can now console dot log console dot log into check what is inside the paragraph because it's speaking the this uh ele this particular element. You understand and passing the value to p so we can now see what is in p by just simply consoling dot log p so it's as simple as that consoling dot log so i'm going to save it now and i'm going to open the html document from my browser uh, yes so this is doom i'm just going to click it then it's going to come up for me form of yes so this is the document. So I can change the title. Here's the title. Let me close this now. All right. Let me close this. All right. So I can just the title is document. So I can just change this to something else. Uh, JavaScript. JavaScript. Do. So I'm going to be working with a lot. Yeah, save control X. So when I save it now, I come here, I refresh. So and I already told you when you are consoling dot log, what you do is you right click inside on your browser and click inspect. So from our inspect, we we'll just click on console. You will see a lot of things, but for now, just work with console. Look at it. This is P equals to ID message. This is JavaScript DOM. So that's what this does for us. It captures the whole elements. All right. So then I'm going to. Uh, so let me also uh, have another paragraph and have the. So why is it called that? Okay. Let me change the ID to. Let me change the ID to. To message. Message. Mm. Uh, uh, let me use a different word. Let me just put DOM. You can, whatever you like, can be the name you are naming it. So I can write constants. Look okay, here now. If I now come back and say, so that means if I want to have access to this information here, uh, get element name by ID, you know, something like that. So if I change this one now from message to DOM, all right. So if we go back and refresh, it has what the output in the console is now different. So 
that means the get element by id helps us to have access to a particular element within the document and by actually calling the name of the identity that's the id so whatever you name it is what is going to be so that's uh, what got element by id that is what it does and it is uh, very easy then that way you can now use it to manipulate uh, to manipulate the data as the case may be so if in case if if let's say for instance i mistakenly press dome 2 for instance and there is no id called dome 2 so what would happen is that the the console.log will return none value none that means it doesn't find any element that have dome 2 as the id as you can see now null no no element with that so then another thing is that if you mistakenly name two uh, paragraphs the same the same identity for instance so both of them are message now and i come to message the dom can only pick the you cannot name two ids the same name in a document you know it doesn't work just like in life two people cannot have the same identity exactly so two people cannot have exact the same identity so maybe two people cannot have the same fingerprint all right so but if you name it probably you forgot and you name it and you are doing get element by id by default uh the script will only pick the first one and ignore the second the first one is encounters while reading the document so and the first one here is the first one that's the first one so as, as you can see it's returning the first one and ignoring the second one so that's how uh get element by id works so you would continue to see how we manipulate it as we proceed so another one is get element by name get get i'm going to comment get element element by name so here what we'll do is that so let's move to uh, uh getting the element by name and in most case in most cases we we it's all use name when you are naming your form attributes i think we've done form so for instance when you have uh inputs input like this so i think i've, I've taught us form in html and css input type is test that's an attribute of an input then we can have maybe type test or radio you know i've talked to a lot of them there's radio there is radio there is test there is a check boss so then you give it a name you give it a name and uh, call the name you give it a name for instance call it um maybe language 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 then you also have value so you are giving the radio a value so when somebody picks it so it's going to come up as a value javascript for instance all right so all this the name i gave it is in my own discretion the value is what i want the value to be all right so let me do ctrl x let me save now sorry i've been using my window machine recently and it has been mixing up yeah so this is the radio button this is the radio button all right so the name is language the value is javascript so unlike the id attributes multiple elements can share the same name within a document multiple elements can share the same name so i can also come here and and just uh oh gosh, sorry yeah oh God, just a minute yeah okay <laughs> so i can type another type and give it the same name language and call it maybe uh what other programming language do we have um, let me just type scripts type scripts 
all right so i'm going to do a tutorial on on typescript 2 and i'll put it up there so yeah because the way i explain the button to you if the if they have the same name that means you can only select one of it that's that's how it works but they can have different value because when you are selecting it the value of the one you are selecting is what will be returned so if i come in now and refresh you can see we have one if i click here it will un unclick this one the reason is because they have the same name so that is how name convention works but id you cannot use the same id let me change this back to uh dome i think we named it id dome that time all right so to have access to the information here now so we we'll just come to our console and say let's uh let uh, data or value the value that is there oh uh, should we use value let's use data equals to document that's the root node document dot get element by get element by name so get element by name and what we'll do is we're going to put the uh, the value language inside language because that's the name of that's the name of the that's the value of the attribute name so get element by name this is from the word name and language so when i click submit now and i come here let's refresh let's see what is going to console okay i've not console.log data so console.log into data so that's it so let me save it so when i um, i need to refresh this every time so when i click look at it so it's saying that get element by uh by name language returns two node lists both of them are inputs input one <laughs> ignore what you are saying there the first one the second input and you know like i told you when you are uh from array the index the index of the first is this is actually returning an array of nodes an array of nodes that's why you can see it input input all right so we are already getting to a, a very more complex nature of programming and you have to watch it uh you have to take your time i mean you know gradually so that it doesn't become complex so it's returning an array input input and there are two the first one the index is zero the the next one the index is one the length is two and what is returning is a uh, node list so just ignore these are the other properties of this particular uh, uh array of this particular property you we'll just just ignore them for now we will get to understand most of these things later as we continue programming all right so so that is just it it is is in this case you see that it's not bringing it out like this because there are node lists so that's that's it so then uh let me see i want to change this one to name to name and see what the output will be i don't know if that would okay so you see in this case now it's returning an empty array because it from the document <laughs> there is nothing there is no how it can fetch that particular name so i deliberately do that so that you can know how these things work so that's how get element by uh name works so let's quickly do uh an example of how we can show you understand what is inside the radio button all right so when you select a particular radio button it's going to give us an output whether the output is very poor is poor is okay or is very good so it's, it's, it's going to be a very little uh demo that we're going to be uh, looking through so i'm going to type it out and uh i'm going to uh i'm going to type it out we'll just see it all right so i'm going to pause this type it out then we'll see it okay let me create a new element so that it can give us a different 
so let me create a new file here and uh, let me call it dome dome 2 just don't my naming convention might not be might not be straightforward so dome 2 so inside dome 2 i will just you will just okay html uh, html enter so that is it so i'm going to pause now then type everything then just come back so that you can also type because this video is going to be a bit very long all right so you are come back so we want to we are creating a new document so get element by tag name demo all right so i name it dom dom 2html so here we have you know we are using label that's what you use with forms so the input type uh, okay very strongly okay let's just remove all of this for all this for for now for All right, so you are welcome back. This is this is the this is the this is what I came up with. So paragraph JavaScript is an easy programming language. It's just like you are asking, is JavaScript an easy programming language? So you want people to select any option. We are rating JavaScript, but whatever you are selecting, all right, carries different value. So when you click on strongly agree, the value will be strongly agree and the identity to identify this particular one is strongly agree as you can see. So of course this value is what you probably process and that is why we wrote it very well, strongly agree, different from the way we wrote this. This is just an identity that we can only use direct to reference this particular input within the document and this is the name. They all have the same name, all right? but different identities and like i said when we're using get element by id the identities you know what should always be different you understand why the name can be the same because we can only choose one of these input buttons per time i've explained this before so you can type it out and please uh well i'm not providing the code so there's no how you can copy and paste because I know most of you are still new in programming, especially if you have been following the course from the beginning. So you might need to type all of this out so that you can make mistake while typing and learn by your mistake. So please proceed to do that. So there is a button. This is another button, all right, with his own ID to call button uh, with ID button rate, BTN rate, then submit. Then there is another, parag uh, another paragraph with an ID call output. So whatever we click here and we submit we click submit we want the output to show all right so that is why i said the dome allows us to manipulate the content uh of a particular document so let me save it now dom2.html so i'll just come to dom i will change this one to 2.html so i'm going to click enter all right so we have it here so javascript is an easy programming language I strongly agree so when you click submit it should output the strongly agree of what i picked when you put agree or neutral or disagree strongly so as you can see so when you click submit we want to we want javascript to be able to echo or to be able to uh, display what we have selected and that is what we want to uh, program now so i will come to just below before the body i'll bring up my script you know we can put this script externally like i explained before but because we are going to be working with information here so i just want to type it here so that we won't be running between uh between two different files so first of all we're going to use the word let the to declare a variable called button that's btn button button equals to get element by id that's document 
document dot get element by id so the id of the button is btn rate so button rate button button okay btn don't forget rates in this case you have to be very careful because it is what the name of the id is here that you must type exactly here it is very very important so you put semicolon at the end of course in those days javascript you don't necessarily you have to put semicolon or it will not run but now even if i ignore the semicolon it will still work but just put the semicolon at the back so sometimes you will see at the end of a, 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 a programming line I will put semicolon. Sometimes I will not put. So just don't get it confused. So then let output 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 equals to document document dot get element by id as well. That's what we are using. So yeah. Sorry, I don't know why this. So, got a uh, let output equals document or get element by ID output. Output. Alright, so this is this particular paragraph we are trying to access because of this identity. Then this button's identity is button rate, so it means we can have more than one button. Alright, so that's, that's that. So, we want to. Uh, we want to listen to an event so we we'll call it events next now you would uh, you will start hearing some new things now and that is where i'm we are going to do immediately so when i click submit that submit is an action it's an event that happened within the document so because i already have given this id a button so by default this this button like let me console.log console.log button i just want to check something okay button directly uh, let me check something so that i can use it to explain oh uh, okay it's just bringing your button out all right okay but that's that's fine so i'm going to write button dot add event listener add event listener so listen to an event when somebody so listen to a, a an event so we are going to specify the name of the event we want to listen to so the name of that event is click you understand so this 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 particular method or function you know is a method of this particular L, uh, this particular node this particular element called button i don't know how i'm going to explain but just follow all right so we are calling this particular method of it that add event listener so what's the name of the event well you, you can go to uh you can google for instance uh, okay this 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 system does not have internet presently so you can google and say so this event add event listener take two parameters i think i've taught us functions it's the same thing like a function it takes two parameter the name of the event that we want to listen to in this case the name of the event we want to listen to is click event when i click on it clicking that's click event all right so you i want you to just google um okay let me see if i can connect to the internet okay that will be taking too much of our time so the event i'm going to be using is click that's the name and it is a standard this word is, a, is a, if you are calling add event listener there are a lot of uh names that you can call depending on what is happening and as we proceed you will see different ways we can use this add event list listener one of it is click then it's going to take a callback function i'm going to explain this later so just write it somewhere so it's a function so when i click this part when i make this click on this button this function will run that's what we call callback function so when i click the button the what is inside this function is going to run so like this just follow through <laughs> let me go back <laughs> so 
I typed equals to, then greater than arrow, then I brought up uh, open and close curly brace. All right, so so that is how like you are calling a function. All right, in this case, the function does not have any name because it's a callback function. It automatically runs when I click on when when this event call click happens on the button. All right. So I'm going to inside it. I'm going to write let uh, rates. If you don't get it at once, you can watch the video again. Equals to document dot get element. This time get element by name. Get element by name into rates. All right. So get element by name into rates then here so i want to kind of look through each of this rate all right so because this if i console dot log dot log rate now rates all right you will see it's going to return an array of all the inputs with the name rates all right so let me let me go go ahead. i i have made a mistake here deliberately all right because the reason why i made the mistake is that sometimes when you make similar mistake you know what to do all right so when i click refresh so i'm expecting to see console.log rate coming up but it is not coming up this console.log rate is not coming up so the reason is because I'm calling an element by ID. Okay, just a minute. Did I save it? So I'm not going to loop through rates because I'm expecting rate to return an array. So I'm going to write rates dot for each. For each, can you see rates dot for each? The same the same way I wrote button dot add uh, event listener. So I'm performing this operation on this button and i'm also performing this for each on this particular uh variable rate for each uh rate for each this one will also take <laughs> a callback function for each rate for each rate because you can for each rate uh, we are getting to a serious work here so you will not be spoon fed but i'm going to explain the code to you if if rate is checked dot checked so we can perform that function to check if it's just like we are saying if rate is clicked we can do if button dot click to because that is also an event listener so if rate is checked all right so what we are okay if rate is checked so what we'll do now is that just wash all the curly braces and the way everything is being written if you make any mistake it is going to run to an error and you see that most times when i uh, open a curly brace it automatically closes it for me and I will just click return or enter immediately. So it helps me to write in between. Just follow through step by step. This is the opening. This is the closing of this one. Everything we are writing here is inside this particular uh, section. All right. Just follow. If you make any mistake, you will come and come back and trace it. That's how to trace your errors, especially if you are new. Your curly braces will be you. You know you will just be mixing it around. So, but you can trace it from the last one. This, you can see it. It forms a box around it to show you this is the op this is the opening, this is the closing, this is the opening, this is the closing. So, if you follow my procedure of the way I used to do things, you would not never really have a problem with it. So, then I also advise if you are, if you are new, I also advise that you watch the video first before you start practicing. Then you come back to it again later. All right. So. So um, uh, let me just finish typing what I'm typing so that I can I can start uh, I can start explaining it. So output dot inner 
inner test output dot inner test equals to so i'm going to use uh, i've forgotten i think i mentioned the name of this particular is on your tab this particular uh, the name of this particular button or key on your is, is on your keyboard directly on top of tab all right so you selected you selected you selected uh selected okay let me use so that don't, don't worry let me use this single quote all right you selected this space then i want to concatenate it with the value of what you select so plus now it's concatenation in javascript rate dot value all right so <laughs> so some of you might be confused here but i'm going to explain all over again but before i even come back to explain let me test if this is working well so i'm going to refresh now so i'm going to click strongly submit all right it's working so now here let me explain so when we click when we press the button click we want to check which of the which of these rates rating did we click which of the check box did we did we select rather here now did we, is selection which of them did we select so that's why we are picking rates for us to be able to know so we have to do let rates equals to document dot get element by name we are getting the element by name all right then i think with console dot log i think i did this i don't know whether it worked rates that's supposed to output i want to use that to explain something it's not it's not sending it out okay all right so so this rate actually returns an array of all the rates that are here each of them so we are now this for each is like a loop for each rate in rates that's how we used to put for each rate in those days so I think for each, let me use for each. Uh, look at it. Is an you are the name of the array is rates. That's why I have rates dot for each element. That means for each element inside the array. Console dot log element. So okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, let me see if I can. I want to explain something at this log uh, rates. not still consoling it out for me okay, okay but all right let's i would get that later so let me just explain in a clear form rate dot for each rate is actually a loop we are looping through all the value of this rate so the name what we name it is rates it returns the array all right then we are now looping through each of them so for us to have access to each of the value so we now uh we now click rates we now type rates you know that this rates is different from this rate and this rate can be anything it's different from the fact this particular get element by id rate is referring to this name rate all right i'm good i'm trying my best to explain in a way you understand then this rate is the name i'm giving to each of the uh each of the values inside the array and i thought i think i've taught you about array so if you've not learned about right go to other previous uh videos to to read about the array so output dot inner output dot inner inner test so we're now checking if this is a conditional statement if rate is checked when i click this which of the rates which of the inputs that i click on that i check that's why you say rate dot checked this is checking 
I'm checking it. Rate dot checked. So any of them that I check per time, rate dot checked. So what I want to do is that I want to output. I want to this output. This paragraph. I want it to show you selected the particular value. It will now return the value if it is neutral, if it is disagree. So it's speaking. That's why I say rate dot value. Can you see rate dot value? That's the value that I've checked. That's what will now come out in the output here. That's why you saw that when I click agree, it's output submit. That's you selected agree. So when I return back to disagree, all right, and I click submit, you selected disagree. The, it is the value. It is the value that I gave to each of the buttons that is actually outputting for me. So that's an example of how to use get element by name. All right. So we are getting the element by name. All right. And since we know it is an array that is coming, we are looping through the array. This is the loop. We are looping through the array to check which of them has been uh, checked. That's if which one is checked, they will now output the value of which of them is checked. So that's the best way I can uh, explain it. This is for each loop on an array. All right. So, um, so that's it's as simple as that. So that's the simple way to explain how this actually works. All right. So if you don't understand, just pause, watch it again. These things might be a bit strange for, to you, but don't worry. The moment you can do your own practice and it works, you can just proceed with time. Most of these things will come together and you will understand. Submit. As you see, you selected neutral. When I click this, submit, you selected agree. So this is how to make your page dynamic. Because people can easily interact with what they are doing themselves. And there's going to be a real-time engagement with them. So, of course, you, you've been to a website where you are filling a form. And when you click submit, you get an information of probably what you have. Uh, submitted so that's how to use get element by id so please take your time you can pause it go back on it again and check you know how this actually work this rate dot value is the value of what we have we checked so we are now passing the value to outputs this particular output this dot inner html we will still see it as we proceed is is helping us to output to Change if yeah if for instance inside this output I said yeah we output here yeah, is output is output all right so this inner test inner test help us to change the, this particular test to the new value we are we are setting it to you know this output the ID output get element by ID that's the output that we are referring to output dot inner test so if i save this now and i come back here and i refresh for instance as you can see he is here is output here here is the output so so if i refresh here is the output so if i now click submit look at what will happen it will remove the value here and change it to the new value that i'm setting it to here it will remove the test and change it to the new test because I'm saying output.inner test. This is automatically going to change the content here. So when I click submit now, you see it has changed it, the value to what is what we have here. So if uh, let me come to element body, as you can see, output is you selected strongly. So let me let me clear it back. Inside this element, as you can see, this is the element of this body. So the, here is the output, but the moment I click neutral and I click submit, you see here automatically the value will just change to what the script, what the JavaScript has been programmed to change it to. So when I click submit, you see automatically changes. You selected neutral and it came up here. If I click disagree, you see it. You can see now. So I cannot return back to the initial. So that JavaScript has already helped me to change the content of this particular document 
until I refresh again now. I'm not going to see that first test of here is the output. So that is what this inner.html uh, specifically does for us. So, uh, so now, but if you see that initially, before I added here is the output, it was, em it was empty like this. It was empty like this. Empty, not was there. So if I click here, submit, it now came up with you, you you selected agree. So what if I want to clear it? Maybe I want to just clear such that this content automatically goes off. I want you to try it. When you click a button here called clear, it should remove this content and make it come back to where it was originally. So try it and see if it's going to if you can attempt it, then I will come back to attempt it for us. So I'm going to put so I don't know if you've been able to do it, but if I'm not able to do it, so what I'm going to do is, um, where I'm not sure if this is necessary, but you know I love to do it so that it can create curiosity in people. So I'm going to give it an ID and call the ID bit button clear. So so I'll just click clear. So what we want to achieve is that we want to see. How you know when I click strongly agree submit, how we can clear our selection, all right, and make this place return back to empty, you know, using the same strategy. So I would come down here. So I want to start newly. So I'll say let's clear button, clear button equals to document dot get element by id dot uh, into so here i'm going to type clear so i think that's the name okay button clear btn btn clear all right so what i want to see is when i click on it just like we did for this clear button so that I can use it to explain add event listener so what type of event are we talking about click event so when anybody clicks it click so it should there's going to be a callback function so this method of writing a function you understand this method of using equals to rather I would have type function you know but this method is actually a callback function so since I already declared output to be this so I can just simply say output output that's that ID I want to empty dot inner test inner test equals to empty I'm just pass an empty string so that means it should empty it. That's all. It will just pick the inner test that is there presently and empty it. So when I click on clear, so if I click save now and I come back here, all right, so we have clear button now. So I have agree and I click submit. You selected agree. If I click clear, it has cleared it. If I click neutral again and say submit, if I click clear, it has removed it. So that's that's the beauty of understanding how document object model works. It helps you to you know interact with it and what you want to see, what you don't want to see. So so that that brings us to an end to get element by name that we are trying to use to uh, to explain this. So let's proceed. So now <clears throat> we want to proceed to uh get element by oh this one is get element by name the one we just completed get element by name yeah sorry it's get element by name so but the one we want to do now is get element by tag name tag name so like we want to get this by this by name the difference is that we are looking at the name of the element but when it is get element by tag name, we are looking at 
the name of the HTML tag. That's the word tag name. So let's quickly do get element by tag name now. So uh, it's easy. Get element by tag name. So just do an example of it, then we'll proceed from there. So I'm going to add a new button because it is when that button is being clicked that's when that's uh, that's that's when we initiate the tag name. So I'm just going to add a button called can't can't tag. Uh, okay, let's see button. button so the id is going to be id can't can't tag so here i'll just type can't that will be the name of the button p p tag that's paragraph so we want to count how many paragraphs are in the document can't paragraphs paragraphs that's p tag paragraphs so that's just it it's as simple as that so i'm going to do let count tag equals to document dot get get element by id so count What's the ID? What's the ID of it? Can't tag. Okay. Can't tag. Right. So that's that's the first thing we'll do. Alright. So can't tag. So we'll now listen to an invest listener on it to help us can't tag name. So it's just the same like what we've been doing. So can't tag dot add event listener. Alright. When you click on it, click, click. So we're going to have a callback function that does something for us, right? So we want to count the number of paragraphs that is that is there. So what we'll just do is let paragraphs want. So we want to pick the number of paragraphs so in this case this is going to just give us an array of the paragraph we now call a method on the array to count the length of the paragraph so you see how that one works length of paragraph equals to document don't forget dot get element by tag name this time then we'll now put the name of the tag inside so and the name of the tag we want to count is p that's paragraph P, this one, how many paragraphs are in there, are inside the document. Let's count one, two. This is one paragraph, it closes here. This is another paragraph. This is another paragraph, P, P. This is one paragraph, so that's one, two, three, four, I think four. So let's see. So we'll now say uh, alert. That's it, just shows an alert message. You see how that works. It's also part of JavaScript. Uh, this thing. So alert. So. So alert. We have. So I'm going to concatenate it. We have space plus. There's a method I can use that I won't be concatenating. So let me just use that one. So this button. This button that this this sign, I think I call it, is it tied or something? I think I, I can't remember what I, what I, but it's, it's actually on top of your tab button. It's on your tab button on your laptop. This this particular button, this 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 particular character can be seen on your tab. I I mean it's on it's immediately on the tab button on your system, so you will see it there. So it will help us to be able to to write things easily so the number of paragraphs 
of paragraphs of paragraphs so i'm going to use the dollar sign like this so this is to show that we are we want to type a javascript code here so but Me a lot. Okay, so so I'm going to say paragraphs, para paragraphs dot length. We are checking the length of the paragraph because here this paragraph is returning an array. So we want to know the length of the array. That means this will return each of the paragraphs. Then paragraph dot length will now count the numbers of that array which is the number of the paragraph so let's see if that is going to work so i'm going to come here and refresh so we have a new button so let me click count paragraph that alert is not working let's let me check what the issue is can't see when i was trying to get the the id for the count paragraph instead of count tag i wrote I, I added additional e and that's why it's not working so i'm going back and i'm going to refresh i'm going to click so it said the number of paragraph four so we have four paragraphs the number of paragraph is four so let's count it again to be sure uh, this is one two this is one ended here this is another one that ended on line 26 that's two this is another one that ended on line 30 that's three then this output is the fourth one it's read through the page i count the paragraph so you use tag name to access uh html tags you use get get uh, element by tag name to access html tags you use get element by name to access the name attribute of any HTML tag. So that's how it works. So you can count the numbers of label. Just try it. See if you can test that. I'm not going to do it for you, but you know, extend your hand to see if you can make that happen. So we can easily have access to the information within the DOM using all of these special uh, uh, inbuilt uh, document methods that is helping us to access the DOM. That's the document object model all right so let's proceed to use to get element by class name get element by class name so it's, it's something so simple as well so let's just complete that before we now proceed to to other ones and create a new document so get element by class name um so i'm going to create here <clears throat> i'm going to create a new paragraph I'm going to create maybe an header and call it get element by by class name. So we want to use whatever we write below this header to explain, you know, explain it. So I don't want to be creating new HTML document every time when I'm trying to explain something because it makes it more long and complex. But uh, as we go, by the time I see that this one is bigger. I will have to create a new document again so that we can always start things afresh and it can help us. So I'm going to create a, um, a navigation just like normal navigation. Okay, so it's going to be like a navigation on the header. Uh, okay, let me use the header. Mm, okay, don't just ignore. So I'm going to have uh, ordered on ordered list. So inside the unordered list, we have a lot of ordered lists. All right, this ordered list we have a class, a class. Oh, sorry. L I, no, L I. Okay, list. All right. So I'm going to give this uh, unordered list. Uh, we have two type of listing on ordered list and ordered list. So I'm going to give it an ID. Let's say an ID of menu. 
so so the first one now so let's see html html then the second one l another l1 css JavaScript. Uh, okay, note. Let's just let's write it like that. So here now I'm going to type. Uh, let's see. So class enter. So the class is going to be item. So this is get element by class name. That's why class name. The other time get element by name name. So it's, it's almost quite you know, the same. All right. So that's just it. So let's see. Uh, let me refresh. All right, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node, good. So how do we now have access to what we have here? So we we'll just do console.log of it. It's not that hard. So you will see what you've not seen before, but don't just worry. Most of these things we, you'll be seeing now, you would understand that better later. When, when we come to real application building, when we are now implementing it. So... So that's when you would understand it. So we're going to be saying let let menu equals to of course document you are already familiar with document dot get element by ID. Eventually, it's not everything you'll be using all the time, but I I bet with you that you'll be using get element by ID like forever. So menu you will look use it forever. So the next thing is let items. Those are the items. This list or let lists inside the menu. Those are the list. The HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So we're not going to say menu. We're not calling on the menu. All right. Which is one that houses the list. So dot get element by class name get element by class name you see it now so this menu so you know initially we used to call document dot get element by so but here we want to get the class name inside this menu component all right so inside this menu so we are referring to the to any class name within this menu all right so like i told you when i started the dome is just like a family tree the document is always the root node. You understand? Then other nodes like this menu now is also another node of this or is a child of this particular node. So we pick it out from the document. We pick menu, got an element by ID because it's within the document. Then we are now looking at the list in the menu. And what we are going to use is class name of item. Item. Is the item that I use for the list item? All right, so it's as good as that. So let me do console.log dot log item first to see uh, to see if I mean the other time it worked and all of a sudden a cut error item is not defined. Okay. Oh, see, I'm calling item instead of lists lists. Because I did not define item. That is why the error says item is not defined. So you cannot call a variable you did not define. So that is it. Please take note of that. Let me... Hey, so look at it. It's consoling, it's consoling dot log it now, the lists. So when we open it up, you see, item, list one, that's li dot item. There are four of them. One, two, three, four length 4 so if i do console.log list dot length now you see it's going to return 4 it's going to return 4 
can you see four it's counting the lists inside uh this particular uh the the numbers of the item one two three four that's what is counting so then how can we just fetch the the content uh list okay list because the list is an array zero dot let me so i'm referring to the first one dot test content all right so i'm saying that each of i mean the 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 first list which is the it, it starts from the indexing starts from zero one i think i've explained this to you so when you have an array the first index of the array is always zero so when you want to make reference to it so we are now calling the first array and having access to the test content the content that is inside the uh the, the that particular element the list the first one so if i click save now so I'll, if i refresh so as you can see the first one is html if i change this to two and save so it will pick the the third one javascript that's the third one here all right so i can say zero like this dot test then I can one two can you see so it will, it, will, it will bring everything for me step by step can you see HTML CSS JavaScript so <clears throat> using query selector using using query selector Right, so then after this uh, one, we will now we'll do a second part of this video. All right, so <clears throat> using query selector, uh, the, f the first, uh, so we we'll just use let element element equals to, so we we'll just type document dot query selector, query selector. So we have two types of query selectors, we have just query selector then we have query selector or all right so we can use both of them queries query selector query selector or you will see the difference so they are um they are basic selectors uh that we can use there is a universal selector whereby we just say um star star is a universal selector that means all so if you console.log console.log element now so it will bring all the all the elements in the document so let's refresh so as you can see console.log html add body html so everything we packaged it so now that is query selector to select everything in the document but in this case if we say if we use all here, all, you, you see the difference now. All will fetch all the information. It will go into the, you see, the node list is 30. HTML, add, meta, it start counting from the first to the last. So HTML, add, meta, the metas there, the title, the body, the paragraphs, the label, the inputs. This input with this particular strong, I agree. You know, you see a lot of them, meta. So this is this is helping us to break it. There are 30 of them, zero to one. We can look through each of them. HTML, add, meta, everything you are seeing in this document. HTML, add, meta, meta, title, body. So that's what is actually seen. HTML, add, meta. So that's the difference between using just query selector and query selector all. So then the query selector can help us to double down. That means to 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 look for a particular element within, uh, like for instance, we can choose a, 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 you, we can choose an HTML tag to query, for instance. So if we say we want to we want to get the first paragraph in the document, so we can do something like let me console log this out, let me comment this out. So we can so let first, so we want to get first 
paragraph p equals to document dot query selector the query selector we are not using all this time and we'll put the paragraph tag inside p query selector p that is the first paragraph so it will just choose the first one because it's just query selector so if we console.log first p console.log uh, first p for instance save so i'll come here i'll refresh as you can see the first pig is Java, javascript is is an easy programming language you understand so that is just it so if you want to just get javascript so it's, it captured the whole paragraph and echo it out so if you want to console.log what is inside that first paragraph for instance so we'll just see dot i think test content should give us that so exactly javascript is an easy programming language so that's the first paragraph in the document this is it that's the first paragraph so that's how to use query selector to get you understand to get to i think we've used something like tag name as well things like tag name all right let's paragraph like this one now is speaking so you understand so <clears throat> So that's p so if we want to get all the p's that is inside we'll now use query selector or so let me control x of course this time my hand is no longer going to be paragraph it's going to just let's say let's okay let me just use that it doesn't really matter that's the name of the variable so if i console.log that now refresh is actually saying on un undefined because in this case it is returning a whole an array so we cannot get the dot, dot the text content of an array. It's returning all the paragraphs. So if you console dot log this way, it should give us all the paragraphs. As you can see, node list four. We have four paragraphs. This is the first one. Oh, <laughs> each of those. This is the first one. This is another one. They all have their own uh, properties. Zero, one, two, three. So four. One, two, three, four. This one has an idea of output. So the whole paragraph on the test that's what that it is querying all the paragraph so you can also test other ones to see maybe all the inputs all the labels all the headers or all the lists so we can get the number of lists on this particular li li for instance all the lists so if i refresh it it will give us all the list there are only four list items l1 with different classes so that is that is for that then we can also use query selector to select class the class of a particular so like in this on this document now we have list with classes class item so instead of saying l1 we can say we want to fetch a particular class so just do dot dot menu sorry dot i think item that's the name of the class item dot so if it is an item we put dot first so that's the difference for items sorry for classes using query selector for classes we put dot first so if i come back here and i refresh it is also going to be like almost the same thing because these are the classes with item with these are the uh, element with class item so if i give this a class name let me give this h2 a class name class class of adding adding for instance so if i change this to if i want to access that class i will change this one to adding all right so it will only fetch the first that adding as you can see h2 only one of it just one h2 adding so i hope you understand how the query selector works now so all you use all to get all of them you use query selector when you just say when you use the query selector alone it fetch the only the first one that is there so that's how to do it then we can also use id we can also use query selector for id so with let me just type it here we use query selector to select um to select universal 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 
you can use it to also select uh, a type type or element tag that's HTML tag you can use it to select tag okay type of any tag so we can use it to select class then we can also use it to select ID so that's the last one I want to do now so the ID let's look for okay we have ID of uh, outputs for instance this particular ID of output so uh, for ID now so we're going to look for an ID which one has ID outputs so I can easily come here a specific ID so instead of dot it's going to be ash ID is always ash so I will now put the name of the ID that I'm trying to access output output so if I'm going to try to access the ID of output so if I come here and I refresh so as you can see ID output that's what is getting out for us so these are the things we can use to uh, to have access to the object within a particular uh, document so this is just part one we'll proceed to part two now uh, I don't know how many parts we will do until we cover the whole element the whole uh, dome structure this is very important as if you are going to be a front-end developer you are going to be dealing with these things so very much so thank you on to the next video.